can you tell me a little bit about what Tulsa Remote is? And actually, I think I was covering Tulsa Remote before you became managing director. <laughs> Probably. I should have yeah. been managing director. How did you get this job? <laughs> the taxpayer me paying for these people to move here to Tulsa. That's not true. Tulsa Remote only moves liberals and Democrats. I think we need to open up our eyes and see the beauty in differences, which I think kind of butts up against some of the local narrative of, really, this is just a program for people that aren't here. What about me? What about me, the Tulsa? Whoa, 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 whoa. Clear out the room, I'm coming through. They want to see what I'm about. And that's that's the name, you know. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra. You gonna hook me up? Okay. Today's right. trying to tap it. I put commas over bullshit. Yeah, I put that on mama. Hey, they trying to block on my blessings. Welcome back to the People of Oklahoma podcast, where I talk to very interesting people here in the great state of Oklahoma. And the person that we have on the podcast today is what I like to think of the Tulsa version of Oprah. They're just passing $10,000 to everybody and anybody that is willing to move here to Tulsa. We have the managing director, Justin Harlan. What of an honor. Remote. I've gotten a lot of intros. That might be the best one yet. <laughs> You nailed it, man. Put that down. Put that down. Man. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's only downhill from here, right? Yeah, you know, seriously, that's that's literally. And we're done. My intros, and then it just goes downhill. It just goes downhill. Justin, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. I've I've been wanting to talk to you about Tulsa Remote for a long time, and uh, you finally said, Stephen, you hit a mark worth your following. That's right. I I didn't want to be one of the early ones, you know, when you had under 100 followers. Yeah, I'm waiting for that 50K mark. I think I I got 10 followers. I reached out to you, and you're like, yeah, we'll Uh, come back to it. We'll go back to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're busy because Tulsa Remote was, was just starting at that point, so I totally, I totally understand. But real quick before we get into, because I want to start with some misconceptions, but I want to give people that don't know what Tulsa Remote is. Sure. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what Tulsa Remote is? Sure. I mean, back in 2018, this idea was born before the pandemic, uh, really in an effort to kind of diversify the talent pool that we had in Tulsa to be prepared for future industries. And, you know, Tulsa has often been reliant on oil and gas, which, yeah. as we both know, is a roller coaster, even in the best of times. And so, you know, it was really this call to remote workers, which at the time, the majority of remote workers were knowledge workers. So people that were going to add some diversity to that talent pool that we know exists here said, Hey, we'll pay you $10,000. If you move to a city, uh, Tulsa and do your remote job here for a year, we know that there's, um, you know, you're going to be adding a job to the economy. That's going to come with extra spending that will boost the economy. If we could find really great people that are also going to contribute to the community, you know, it might be worth the investment. And we've often seen that Tulsa is a place that's hard to get people to give a chance. But once people move here and give it a chance, they typically stick around. Um, And so it was really a bet on that. It was a bet that if we could get folks to the city uh, to do their job here for a year, people would stay. And so in that first year, 2019, we brought 70 people. And then of course, in 2020, everything changed. And far more remote workers. A lot a lot of people watch Tiger King, which said, yes. you know, I got to move to Oklahoma and be a part of that, you know? Did that really boost? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I was about to say, did that really boost? Uh, well, maybe. I, don't, I would uh, doubt it. No. But, you know, we had uh, 380 people move here in 2020, about 950 wow. in 2021. And we just surpassed 3,000 members this year. So um, really just a, an incredible, we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of aspects of that journey that I'm happy to talk about. But at the heart of it is, is a pull to get folks here to Tulsa to contribute to both the economy and the community in meaningful ways. Yeah. So you started with seven seventy. You said 70? 70 in that first year. Yeah. And then you bumped it up to 200 and. Well, in 2020, there was about 380 and then 2021 was 950 ish. So um, just rapid growth, really maximizing on the opportunity of more people working remotely and trying to pull them into Tulsa to, you know, when you have the freedom to live where you want to work, um, which many of us experienced in the midst of the pandemic, I think a lot of people really woke up to the fact that, hey, I'm paying $2,000 for a little square, you know, 500 square foot studio apartment in LA or San Francisco or New York, and uh, often in, also stuck in my house during the pandemic pandemic or stuck yeah. in my apartment. So I think that really provided a, a great value for folks seeing the cost of living here, but also not sacrificing quality of life, you know, and right. I think Tulsa over the last 20 years has developed in incredible ways as a city that makes it very attractive for folks looking for that type of lifestyle. Yeah, and I totally understand that because I 
Um, I have a YouTube channel called Stephen Talks Oklahoma where I talk about, um, you know, Oklahoma. And I get a lot of people, you know, ask me questions about, you know, Tulsa. But I've also had people ask me questions on Tulsa Remote because I made some videos about Tulsa Remote because I think it's, I mean, if you're looking to move, uh, move somewhere and, you know, and you're a remote worker, obviously yeah. look at Tulsa Remote. Yeah. Um, so, but I, they, they, I had some questions that people asked me. Sure, or, let's hear it. Let's or hear even it. local people. <laughs> yeah. Actually, mostly local people that <laughs> want to see the video and they're, you know, uh, don't have the right facts. Okay. And, I, and I, I am a firm believer of being a fact checker. So I'm just going to go directly to the story. Okay, let's get to it. So I'm on the, the hot first seat. One, the first one, uh, the one of the comments I get is, the taxpayer is footing the bill for the $10,000 to these remote workers. Is that true? Is the taxpayer me paying for these people to move here to Tulsa? That's not true. I mean, it's funded by the George Kaiser Family Foundation. So this is a privately funded uh, program that also gets public partnership through a pay for success model with the state of Oklahoma, where if somebody that we recruit comes to Tulsa, sticks around for a couple of years, we can actually get the employer tax dollars that follow them to the state up to $10,000. So it's really, I think, a model that uh, private and public partnership, where you really want to see some of that come to life, where the private dollars from the George Kaiser Family Foundation took the risk, tried something new. And then now that we see it working, the state has come behind and said, let's help other cities, other towns replicate this across the state um, in a way that, you know, in some places that don't have uh, the fa you know, the support of a family foundation like ours. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a public private model, but I would say the answer to you paying for this program is, is definitely not true. Okay, good, good. I'm glad we got that cleared up. So are you, you like the program now? Was that what it, was that what it yeah, took? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I'm okay with, you know, helping other people, and, but as long as it doesn't come out of my, Whew. my wallet, Whew. you know? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's relax. Uh, what no, else you got? No, no. Here's, here's, here's a big one. Okay. Here's a big one. Tulsa remote only moves liberals and Democrats to Tulsa. <laughs> I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, first off, we, you know, never ask in our selection process about political affiliation. So you don't ask for people's voting records. We, we do not. Okay. And as a 501c3, right. you're actually not allowed to even be partisan in that way. I mean, if we're going to be rational about this question, though, I, I do understand why people form that narrative. I yeah. mean, oftentimes yeah. a, you know, the stories that we tell about Tulsa Remoters are folks that are moving from big metropolitans like L.A. or San Francisco or New York City. Those are typ typically very liberal leaning cities and they come to Oklahoma, you know, for this new life, new quality of life, lower cost of living. And that's often a story that's told in the media. Um, yep. Now, that doesn't represent all 3,200 of the people that we've moved here. And I know that, you know, our the beliefs of our members can, you know, take a wide spectrum of uh, political thought and, and diversity. And, you know, for me, that's what is so exciting is that there's not one story. Um, it certainly is not true that everybody is a liberal. And I would actually say, you know, to the folks that are commenting in that way, um, I would ask us to think a little bit bigger because I think mm -hmm. underneath comments like that or criticisms about the program is a tone of in Tulsa, we don't want people that think differently than us. Mm. Um, and it's almost like every Oklahoman has a shared value or belief system. And anyone who doesn't share that is not welcome here. And I just think that's a dangerous place to be. I mean, especially in our country that is in a very divisive moment. Um, I think we need to open up our eyes and see the beauty in differences and, and be okay with welcoming folks in that might think differently than us right. and not be scared by that, but really see it as an opportunity to build our own perspectives, to have some shared understanding and not judge somebody simply based on what their political beliefs are right no and it, and that's what, and i got that question that one from uh i interviewed two people that were went through the tulsa remote program yeah. there were a couple of clients of mine uh that i helped move down here and um i interviewed them and my my, my client had long hair you know <laughs> he mm -hmm. looks like a little surfer guy from california and he was from california but someone in the comments said, oh, you're just moving all these, you know, liberals here to Oklahoma. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you don't even know this guy's actually conservative. <laughs> <laughs> right. And like, and, but we didn't talk about that. In yeah. The, but we we're talking about other things. And, yeah. And, well, I mean, it doesn't always have to be about politics. And so I, I was like, all right, I'm going to bring this question up to Justin. Sure. I'm glad you did. I think it's a big misconception for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. And then one of my last questions about this misconceptions is 
The reason why the housing prices here in Tulsa have gone up is because <laughs> it's all your fault, Justin. It's all your fault with Tulsa Remote moving these people, giving them ten thousand dollars, raising our property yeah, apologies, property taxes, and the increase. <laughs> why? Why? Why is Tulsa Remote doing this to Tulsa? Well, the property you're tax? a realtor, so you could probably speak yeah. to this better than I can. But I mean. You know, to say that we haven't played a role would be naive. I mean, anybody who's bought a house in Tulsa over the last five years has certainly played a role. I mean, it's all a demand and supply equation, right? And increased demand means prices are going to go up. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, we can't ignore the fact that this is a national trend. There's a lot of variables. Just about everywhere has gotten more expensive. Tulsa remains um, one of the most affordable places in the country. And mm -hmm. every list that any sort of realtor site puts out there acknowledges that Tulsa is one of the most affordable big cities that you can choose to live in. It's a great place to buy a house. And it still remains a storyline for our program. People are attracted to the affordability of this place. Um, you know, and I think something we have to also be okay with is the fact that Tulsa is becoming a better place to live. Yeah. And that is not just because of Tulsa Remote. And people are moving here from all over the country because it's simply cooler. Like it's a much different city than it was when I moved here 20 years ago. Right. And I think that naturally with that is going to be a demand for what our city has to offer. Now, I do think that the powers that be, which is not me and it's not you, have a responsibility to say, okay, as our city becomes more attractive and we assume that demand is going to go up, we've got to keep supply up too. Yeah. You know, and I know there's a number of programs like Partner Tulsa, I mean, the George Kaiser Family Foundation, the city of Tulsa is thinking about that. How do we increase supply in the midst of demand increasing? And I know that there's plans to do that. Um, but we all have to be comfortable with the fact that as Tulsa becomes a more attractive place, more people are going to want to be a part of it and acknowledge that the Californian that moved next door to you may not be from Tulsa remote. They may just be a Californian right. that is attracted to this cool city. Um, and, you know, I think that, uh, again, tr kind of pointing to Tulsa remote, which is often, you know, I, again, I understand it in a rational way that it's a program that is recognizable, that is often in the, in the media, the stories are often being told. And it's easy to say that's the issue, but there's a number of national issues um, that have caused this housing crisis for us across the country and Tulsa is not immune to it. Yeah. Yeah, my standpoint on it is no, no it doesn't. Like Tulsa Remote, if it, ha if it did have an increase in home, home values, it is so, so small that you won't even recognize it. And the reason why is, Tulsa before COVID was already considered a undervalued market yeah. uh, before COVID, a, a very, very undervalued market, like compared to the rest of the nation. Yeah. And then COVID happened. You saw increase in houses 20, 30% across the country. Right. Not just Tulsa, across the country. And Tulsa had a little bit more because we were already considered a undervalued sure, market. Sure. And then. So there, there goes that one. There's one point of it. And then the second point of it is you said how many people moved in 2021 or 2020? How many people? 380. Moved? And how many of those people bought houses? Oh, it's usually people. about 20%. 20%. So this year so far, I mean, in this market, yeah. only 40 people have bought a home this year. And we're, you know, people. we're in August. Okay, so. so we'll say this yeah. year, 40 people bought a house across Tulsa. <laughs> across Tulsa. Across Tulsa. Yeah. So you're saying 40 people can change the way our market, like, so. It's That's, a drop. Yeah. It's a drop. A little drop. Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. little drop in a big ocean. Yeah. So, yeah. So the Tulsa remote, even though it's great, love people buy, it has not really affected our, the way our valuation of our homes. Um, no, but yeah. I don't mind the question. I mean, and I think it's, it's something that we care about too. Yeah. You know, like when we uh, built up this program, we, th we think about ways that are within our control to do our part to ensure people are buying responsibly. Um, every realtor or lender that we connect directly to a person in our program to help support with a mortgage or finding a home goes through a crash course, a five session, um, you know, course on the role that housing plays in creating an equitable uh, city and the self-awareness that you can build up as a realtor or lender for that equity and that pursuit of equity that we have at the foundation and, and within Tulsa Remote. Um, we, you know, as, as somebody considers whether they want to buy a home, we tell them tangible ways that they can ensure that they are doing that in a way that supports equity across the city. Uh, we also, um, you know, have uh, a number of resources in place that ensures that 
people have the information they need to do that wisely. Uh, and you know, for us, it's, it's really about ensuring that everybody's informed and knows the role that they play. And then we trust that they as adults are going to make that decision. And we also ensure that no one can make revenue off their home in their, in their year in the program, um, because we don't want it to become something where people are just coming in from very expensive cities and purchasing a bunch of homes and renting them out. That's another place where we have control. And if we catch people doing that, we take it really seriously. So, you know, for us, it's what's within our control as a program and then also just being comfortable with Tulsa becoming a place that people want to be. And I think we need to embrace that and be proud of the fact that our city has evolved. Yeah, no, definitely. So yeah, thank you for, uh, all right, I'm off the hot seat. Huh? Yeah. All right. Good. And debunking all of those hard, hard questions. I can't right wait here. to see the comment section on this no, one. Dude, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm going to lead it off with that liberal question. That's going to get, that's going to get a lot of, all right. Views. All right. I'm all about the views. Um, so the uh, so Justin, how did you get in this position of managing director, and what is that? Yeah, well, so I you know started my career. I moved down to Tulsa to go to TU. I've been here since 2004. Uh, started my career in education, so I helped start the region for Teach for America here oh, in Tulsa. I um, was there about seven and a half years, and then most recently led. Um, reading partners, which is a volunteer based uh, tutoring literacy program where you pair up an adult with a child, um, got uh, through COVID there, April of 2021, really was kind of seeking out something outside of education. Um, I love the phase of an organization that is like, we have a good idea and something is working and we really need someone to come in and create systems that help it scale responsibly. And that's exactly where Tulsa Remote was in 2021 when I joined the team, um, having just come out of the pandemic in the midst of that rapid growth, mm -hmm. but still a very small team, almost kind of startup mentality. Everybody was doing a little bit of everything and uh, was really excited about the opportunity to contribute to the city in different ways um, outside of education, but also help the organization grow responsibly, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and so you basically help, are you like the top person at Tulsa remote or are you like, I am yeah. the leadership? Pro I mean, how's that? Yeah, I, I guess, I guess yeah. you could say that. Yeah. We've yeah. got a team of about 30 folks, you know, oh, everybody, yeah, 30 people. yeah, everybody has an important job, you know, whether it's just getting the word out about Tulsa that causes folks to apply, reviewing those applications and doing the interviews and then welcoming people once they're on the ground here. And then of mm -hmm. course, operations behind the scenes. I mean, everybody's, everybody's got an important role. I try to do my part to, to lead and, you know, doing stuff like this often kind of a, a mouthpiece yeah. for the program and both in Tulsa and across the world, which yeah, has been fun. Cause you, cause I saw, did you just, when did you go to Canada? Didn't you go to Canada? Canada was last that? summer. Yeah, I've been oh, to Canada. Summer, yeah, I know. It's I crazy, gotta, right? I gotta talk to you more. Been to Lisbon a couple <laughs> times, uh, which has been a lot of fun. They had a, the, the biggest remote work conference uh, in the world there in April. Got to go and talk to folks about Tulsa in Lisbon, which was crazy because there was, you know, somebody showed up to my session, posted about Tulsa Remote on Instagram, tagged us, and she had come from Italy and was saying that this was the session she was looking forward to the most out of the whole conference. Oh, so somebody wow. from Italy coming to my session in Lisbon to hear about Tulsa. It's just, I mean, some Did of the, move? no, she, no. I mean, she's, she wasn't necessarily interested in moving, oh, but more okay. about just learning how that economic development strategy could support the town that she was in, in Italy. So, Man. I mean, the, the, the ways in which this program has helped people see the beauty of, of this place is really something that we don't take lightly. So how did how did it start up? Like who what what was the birth idea of this Tulsa Remote? Like how did it come to yeah, well, honestly, a lot of it was uh, even in programs like Teach for America, where I started my career, we had really hard times uh, getting people to come and do their two year commitment in Tulsa. But mm -hmm. once people were here, we had some of the highest retention rates. Um, so you see kind of these proof points of you know, if you could just get people to give Tulsa a chance, right. then they're likely to fall in love with this place and stick around. And so a lot of it was kind of under that premise that if we could, you know, hang a carrot that would get people here. Um, and at the, you know, it's still really, I think at the time was more about the cash. Now I think a lot of it is about the experience and the community and the connection, which we can right. talk about. But, you know, if you could get people here, um, to see what this place is about and kind of break down the misconceptions that they might have about Oklahoma or Tulsa, then they're likely to stay. And that's, that's ring true for us. I mean, 90% of people in the program are staying beyond the year commitment they make. And since 2019, anyone that's moved here and finished their year, about 75% of those people are still around today. So, you know, wow. it, it's, it speaks to Tulsa's stickiness. Huh? 
So was it George Kaiser that came up with this idea or was it just like a group of people and George Kaiser was like, Hey, I'll split the bill on this. Yeah. Or, like, I mean, I don't think it was George himself, you know, but obviously, uh, a number of folks were involved in kind of the, the birth, uh, Aaron Belsley was, uh, the, the original leader of the organization, the okay. director. Um, and then, you know, I came in after the pandemic and just kind of helped everything scale. Man, so. dude, that is, that is really cool. And so you go to like, did, did anybody else do this across the country before Tulsa or was Tulsa the first one? That Tulsa was the in? first city that did it like this. And now there's 70 programs across the country. So actually, if you go to really? makemymove.com, so if you're you know interested in moving to a place, there's so many programs like this now that have replicated our model that there's actually a website that houses all of the information of all the places that will pay you to move there. So makemymove.com is a place to go check out if you are interested in that. But you know, it's uh, it's something that we really set the ground floor um, mm -hmm. to have cities think differently because really the traditional economic development strategy has been, I'm gonna go and recruit a company and lay out some incentives so that the company comes and brings the jobs with them, right? Right. Um, and this is really a different way of thinking about it where instead of putting all of our eggs in one basket as it relates to one company, if that company leaves in five years, all those jobs are gone. If we go and attract 3,000 people, we've got 3,000 different baskets and we can actually you know, be okay with losing 10, 15% of those folks over a year, two years or three years because we know that the vast majority are still here. It's a far less risky approach Approach and it's focused on the talented individual as opposed to a large company that could pick up and move. And that makes so much, so much sense. And also the way I kind of, and this maybe happened, you know, accidentally, or maybe you guys did it on purpose, but I feel like when you target a remote worker, and I would like to see maybe statistics on this is like how I feel like a lot of remote workers are also have that little bit of an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. And yeah. they also have like side things that they do, yes. you know, in the community or, you know, help out. I mean, it's, do you see, find that true or yeah. did I just make all that stuff up? No, yeah. you're, you're yeah. onto something there. Yeah. We see that about one in five of our folks are interested in starting a business. Um, there's a really cool story. Even just this past weekend, there's a sourdough bakery downtown that opened up right by the tavern. Uh, a guy named Lawrence that we paid to move here has, a, has had a full-time remote job, but started making sourdough with his wife and now they have a business and they're starting a family and, you know, they, they have really leaned into all that Tulsa has to offer. Um, so yeah, you're onto something. And, and I don't think it's just remote workers, but I think naturally the types of people that we attract are remote workers that are also okay taking a risk mm. and picking up their entire lives and moving to a new place, which true. is a key component of being a successful entrepreneur. You got to be willing to bet on yourself, take some chances. And I think that oftentimes, which is really cool to hear these stories, Tulsa provides less commute time. Mm -hmm. So you have more time just to like think Yep. And then it also provides financial freedom, yep. you know? And so you have now more time and more money. And what do you do with it? Especially if you're in that mindset of creating and being an entrepreneur. And I don't think there's a city that's more ready for people bringing those ideas to life than Tulsa is. This is why I told it. I told uh, Monroe Nichols this the other day, who's running for mayor here in Tulsa, is when you pick Tulsa, you're playing a game of chess, not checkers. And I'll, I'll explain. So when people are looking to move, from you know a different state or a different city they typically look at austin yep. denver atlanta nashville las vegas you know nevada but that's where everybody's moving we saw a huge influx into you know salt lake city phoenix nashville austin you know during the pandemic right yeah but that was the next move but when you pick tulsa you're looking at the next next move and i feel like tulsa's there at that next next move i think it's I think it has a lot to lot for lot a lot for lot to offer for people, and I think people just don't realize it yet. Uh, you're you're yeah. preaching to the choir. I mean, yeah. that, and I think that's probably the most fun aspect of this job is when people see, you know, they they hear it, and I'm paid to say it, but when they feel it and they see it, and the, you know, it, they like experience Tulsa, it's like, oh wow, yeah, you guys aren't lying. And I mean, it's uh, we really try not to sugarcoat the experience because I don't think you have to. I mean. Last year, there were seven James Beard nominations in Tulsa. I love food. I don't know about you, but I love food. What's James Beard? It's like the 
you know, peak of restaurants, um, the award that people can get. Uh, it's like the, the highest Whoa, of highs. Vegas this. had five, you know, the entire state of Kansas had two. Uh, so Why is no one Tulsa had seven. It? I even do food reviews. All right. I suck. Mention it in every podcast <laughs> moving yeah. forward. You don't know what James Beard is? This, James, is, this is destroying your brand as dude, a podcaster. It is definitely destroying my brand. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. I get this big audience. You wouldn't come on until I had this audience. And then now you ruin it all. So we're, you know, we're crushing it in food, um, which by the way, uh, like it's not going to be the burger shops that I've seen your oh, yeah, content. I go yeah. To, I go yeah. The, I go the whole <laughs> you may be in the right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which you have, you have great content. I love it. Thanks. Um, but there, you know, music, um, Canes and the BOK center. I mean, then we haven't even talked about the gathering place, the outdoors yeah. amenity, outdoor amenities. And then I think the rich history of Tulsa and Oklahoma, I think is coming to life in so many cool ways. I mean, one of the biggest storylines that we hear from Tulsa Remoters is being called to Tulsa or learning about Tulsa through the tragedy that is the Tulsa race massacre right. and being inspired to be a part of rebuilding Black Wall Street. And again, yeah. tapping into that entrepreneurialism and seeing the investment and intentionality that's being placed in that space, um, I, people feel called to that. And I think it's something that we as a city are starting to, you know, not just wipe under the rug and ignore, but talk about freely as a point to bring back that inspiring aspect of our rich history as a city. And people feel called to that. Uh, yeah. And it's a consistent storyline through Tulsa Remote for sure. Yeah. So going back to like people coming into Tulsa. So you said, what is the percentage that people leave? after or stay after their first year 90 percent. 90 percent. and you yeah. said it was 75 percent of anyone who is done with their year is still here today wow yeah. that's crazy it's exceeded expectations i mean we 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 believed at our core that if we could get people here they'd stay yeah. but people are staying even longer than we you know initially thought yeah but you guys are also doing things like you're not just saying hey ten thousand oh, bucks no. come in no. you know and we'll let you let we'll let tulsa i mean you guys are actually doing stuff to help out outside of the ten thousand the ten thousand dollars yeah the ten thousand dollars gets people's attention i mean it's a right. headline and you know i think that it often is maybe what pulls someone in to read the article or click the social ad but at the end of the day that's really just paying for your moving costs right. and you've got to know that on the other side of that move is something that's better than what you're getting right. we we place a lot of focus on community um, you know, we support folks through that onboarding process, but then when they arrive in town, you know, we have four folks on our team that have a portfolio of members that they meet with in their first 90 days being in Tulsa mm -hmm. and, you know, connect them to people or organizations that are going to tap into their values and passions as a human being and help them live that out in, in Tulsa in meaningful ways. So we, we like to think of it as, um, the analogy we use is like when you go to a store to buy a, a goldfish. Mm -hmm. and they put it in a bag for you and then you bring that bag home and you have an aquarium that you've prepared hopefully if you're a responsible fish owner <laughs> right. and you put the bag that's in or you put the fish that's in the bag in the aquarium but it's still in the bag right because right. it has to get acclimated exactly. to its new water and then at some point it is and you cut the bag open and the fish swims freely so we kind of see that bag as like the first 90 days that somebody's in town mm. we're trying to help them get acclimated to this new place really understand how they might contribute in meaningful ways but then our intention is that they don't need a program in order to love what tulsa has and right. if we do our job early on they can kind of swim freely across the city make those connections and our hope is that you know, as folks are meeting Tulsa Remoters, it doesn't become about a program. It's just a really cool person that has, you know, taken a chance on this city and is, is contributing in meaningful ways. Yeah. And then, so like after they get, you guys have like, what else is it on there? You got 10,000, 36 got degrees north, 36 yeah. degrees north, which is a co working space here yep. in here in Tulsa that they get access to. They have how many locations now? They have three, but they're consolidating to one, which will open up here in a couple months. And is it still gonna be down there in the Tulsa Arts District. Yeah, it's uh near Welltown Brewery on Cheyenne. It's a big old white building uh, that used to be a train station, I believe. That, oh, so they're uh, not they going to be at that same one? Nope. Oh, it's 115,000 it. square foot co-working space, state Ooh. of the art. Uh, it's going to be one of the biggest co-working spaces in the country. So yeah. when are they going to open that? That's coming up here in November. 
do you think you can get me in there before anybody else? I'll do a video for him. <laughs> I, I'll break I the, know some people. <laughs> do, make some calls, Justin. You owe me. You owe me. Actually, you don't owe me anything. But <laughs> I, I, love, I love breaking news and getting into places where we could probably make it happen. Okay. Yeah. I, I got a following now. I got a <laughs> following. I got, I got more than a hundred subscribers now. Um, so they get access to the uh, thirty six degrees north, and then I also I love wa watching you guys on Instagram and. Uh, in TikTok and stuff because you guys always have like parties or get togethers. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of those things you guys, didn't you guys have like a nineties or sitcom something? We did uh when we hit 2000 members, we did a Y2K party. Y2K. Yeah, I, which saw that. I went dressed as like Justin Timberlake. Yes. My wife was Britney Spears and yes. like the iconic all denim, uh, which is great. And then we just hit 3000 members. So we did a cosmic 3000. So everything was super futuristic. I don't know what we're going to do when we get to 4,000, yeah. but uh, we got time to think about it, but, but yeah, there's five to 10 events every month. We've got a team of amazing people that run those events and we try to make them events that are focused on introductions to other organizations across the city, um, or experiences that you couldn't get on your own. So it's not right. just, Hey, let's meet up here for a happy hour. Or let's go to this movie together. I mean, the folks that we're bringing in can afford to do those things on their own, but how can we create unique experiences that help people understand um, other ways to get connected in Tulsa and also, you know, maybe expose them to some of the beauty that they couldn't get on their own. Right. So you moved, you moved a lot of people. Do you have any like success stories that come to top of head or top, top of your mind of someone that moved here and has stayed and, you know, has made Tulsa their home and has a big advocate Oh, Four. sure. Yeah, we got yeah. we got a lot of those. I mean, Oboom comes to mind. He was one of our first folks moved here in 2019. Um, they, you know, him and his wife took a chance on Tulsa before the pandemic. He is a, a huge uh, advocate for theater and getting underrepresented folks involved in theater. He leads at Central, Middle, and High School now. Um, he is involved in the Tulsa Theater. His wife opened a mm. restaurant, Curds and Way, at, at Mother Road Market. No way. Yeah. That yeah, was a faith. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, again, that's a great example. Like, who cares Kurtz. if they're a Tulsa remote or, you yeah. know, they're doing big things for Tulsa and um, you're surprised to even hear their Tulsa remote, which is what Kurtz we want. And way. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I haven't eaten there yet, but I've always see it. I'm like, man, I need to stop at that spot. Yeah, so have, that's a great I one. Do it. You know, and then you hear stories about, you know, like uh, Jasmine comes to mind who moved here. She has now, because of what she's experienced in Tulsa, moved like every single family member to Tulsa um and and bought a home she's a black woman under the age of 30 doing things with her business that she never thought would be possible owning a home um and moving her whole family i mean it's just like you get to see bits and pieces of people really really living out the american dream in ways that they didn't think would be possible in california or new york I've, and i've i've helped to move a lot of different tulsa remoters to tulsa um, and then, uh, one of my friends, Trevor and Basha Liston, uh, just opened a business downtown okay. Tulsa, um, uh, Wick and Flame Candle Bar. Love it. Yeah. Love so it. So there were Tulsa Remoters, but it, it kind of sucked for them because they came during like the height of COVID. Yeah. So you guys did, couldn't really do events right. in person, right. which you guys tried with like, you know, online events and happy hours and meetups. Yeah. And I mean, even, but, you know, like I mentioned, there's different phases of this organizational journey. I mean, when I yeah. came in in 2021, we had five staff members, you know, and now we've got 30. So we can obviously do things now that we couldn't do then. And the supports we can provide are just much different because you have more capacity. And uh, when I joined, it was like, how do you have events responsibly? Started to kind of reintroduce some mm. of that as right on the right as we were getting vaccinated and starting to kind of consider that whole world. So, you know, I think it's uh, there's there's been different, uh, I guess, life cycles to the organization. And depending right. on when you came, you experienced it in a different way. But right. um, things are really consistent and churning nicely now. I mean, we're bringing in 40 to 60 people every month and every Man. month we have a visit for about 48 hours where we typically have 75 to 100 folks on that visit which is you know just just having the responsibility of showcasing the city is so much fun so. man so do you guys have like a limit you guys will take a year or is there like no limit we have goals but no we, we don't have a limit i mean we certainly budget for what we anticipate based on trends and and we 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 have a budget that we you know responsibly stay within mm -hmm. uh but if we were to exceed the number of folks that we want to bring in we'd be thrilled about that i mean we you know we oh, think wow. that um we really if anything want want to bring even more yeah. uh because i think tulsa is ripe for this moment 
Dang, so you don't have a budget. So you can bring in. I a, just a said I had a budget. No, no, no. What I, I heard, <laughs> what I heard is you want to bring as many people as you can in here. Uh, so, so like, let's say, what's the most you ever brought in one year? 900 and something? 950, yeah. 950. So, like, if you had over 1,000 in one year, that would be okay? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Dude, George Kaiser is a gangster, man. That's great. <laughs> George Kaiser. I call him, I call him a GK. Oh yeah. yeah you, you guys uh, are close. Yeah, we're close. We're close. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, just kidding. I never met the guy, but he can come on the podcast anytime. George, George, if you hear me, uh, Mr. Kaiser, come on. Love to have you on. Yeah. Uh, you got all formal when you were inviting him on. I thought oh, you, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about, we're talking about GK here, <laughs> Mr. Kaiser. Um, so the, yeah, Tulsa, Tulsa remotes. Great. And can you kind of touch like on like the, the process of, sure. of, of like, uh, let's say, I saw this really awesome guy on YouTube, a channel name Stephen Talks Oklahoma. He mentions Tulsa Remote. Yeah. What's the next steps if I'm interested? Yeah, well, let's start with eligibility. I mean, you got to yeah. be 18 uh, or older. You yeah. have to be legally allowed to work in the United States. Uh, you have to have a full-time remote job, mm -hmm. um, which means your your company is not located here in Tulsa or Oklahoma, and then you're moved, you're just moving here anyways. You got to have a remote job that's adding a job to the economy, and you have to have lived outside of Oklahoma for at least a year. Okay. Okay. So then you apply. We typically get back to you within a couple of weeks based on that application. Um, and then invite you to an interview if you qualify, where you'll have a 20, 30 minute conversation with one of our team members over Zoom. That's typically a way for you to ask your questions about Tulsa Remote, but also for us to just kind of double check everything that's in your application. And then from there, you'll get an offer or you'll get rejected. And if you get an offer, you have a year to move to Tulsa. Um, if anything changes along the way, you know, just being open and honest with us about that, but there's income verification. So we'll check to make sure that you make mm -hmm. the amount of money that you said you do. Um, we'll check your lease to make sure you're, you've signed up for a commitment somewhere here in Tulsa for at least a year. Um, and then we start that onboarding process of welcoming you in and you start your year when you do an orientation and you have to be in Tulsa to do that orientation. So okay. it's really just kind of planning out, you know, from that acceptance, uh, how quickly do you want to move and get signed up for that orientation? And then all of those benefits start to kick in after that orientation. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, and that's what I've heard a lot about a lot of people that went through the application. They were like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's very easy. And mean, usually you it? find out, you know, and, and that's, that's for me, you know, one thing that I think is especially important for your audience is because of the stewardship that we want to give to the foundation and, and the ways in which we want to use the money responsibly, like we're really not looking to pay people that are moving here anyway. Yeah. Um, so if you're in contracts with a realtor already, or you see this house that you, you know, definitely want to buy, and then you so happen to talk to Steven and Steven says, Oh, you should apply to Tulsa remote. We're really not looking to pay folks that are just like on their way right. here. Um, we, we like the money to be used in ways that are like going to put somebody over the edge and say, you know, Tulsa is a place that I want to contribute. Um, not just a free pass to pay for your moving costs on, on the way into right. town. Um, and so that's another big one. You know, we, we have a great team of folks that will dig into kind of the timeline of events and right. did you apply before you started talking to that realtor and we can kind of put those pieces together but you know just ask folks to be good help us be good stewards of that money right. too yeah. right absolutely absolutely yeah and also i have videos out there about tulsa remote so still call them if you see that video you haven't talked to me you can still go talk to them. Yeah, and TulsaRemote.com. You can get a lot of info there. Social media. We, we run some great social media platforms. Yeah. And then info at TulsaRemote.com is a great place to send any questions. We're happy to help. Right. Awesome. And then there's there's, there's two ways you can get the 10K. Is there still two ways? There are. Yeah. There's still two yep. ways. So the first way, and can you break down that? Well, that let's way? hear you do it. You Sounds want like, me to do yeah, it? Yeah, let's okay. go. Let's go. All right. This All is right. a little buster for you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is how Tulsa Remote is broken down. <laughs> so you have two ways. The first way is probably the more traditional way of you don't know if Tulsa is the right fit and you want to test it out for a year. So you want to rent for your first year, which is totally You're fine. crushing it so far. It's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a $2,500 bonus at the very get go to help you with the moving costs of getting you U-Haul pods, boxes, get you down here, get yep. you set up 2,500 yep. bucks. After that, we'll give you a $500 stipend. Um, that will go over 12 months. After that, we're going to give you a big pat on the back and we're going to give you a $1,500 bonus at the very end. So basically saying thank you for your year and we hope you stay. Uh, after that. All right. What's the other alternative? The other alternative is if you want to pull the trigger and buy a house, 
<laughs> you want to buy a house? No, a guy. Um, you mm. can do, uh, basically, you can buy a house right off the bat and get your $10,000 not up front. What you have to do is you have to find a house. So actually, first off, you got to get accepted through the program before you start searching for houses because we're not just giving out 10K to anybody. Thank you. Yeah. you got, We want people, you know, that, are, you know, are, this will set them over the edge. Yep. So you have to, after you get accepted into the program, you go search for houses with a realtor that uh, that knows what they're doing and also that works well with Tulsa Remote. Yep. Uh, like like Justin said, they have a process yep. you know, yep. helping realtors understand the program a little bit better. Um, and then after that, if you find a house, you've got to get it under contract and sold. It has to be closed. Correct. Once it is closed, you will get this thing called a warranty deed or a title deed. Right. You will then turn that into Tulsa Remote. Your name has to be on it, not some other body's name. Your name has to be on it because we want to make sure you're the one that bought it. Yep. After you get that to Tulsa Remote, they will cut you a check for $10,000. Crushed it. Dude, let's just say I've been doing this for a while, Justin. Actually, I think I was covering Tulsa Remote before you became managing director. Probably. I should have yeah. been managing director. How did you get this job? Like, honestly, how did you? Was that rude? Sorry. It's because I know Sarah about Sarah's. James Beard restaurants. That's oh. really what it what it comes down to. And you know GK? You know yeah. GK? Okay. All right. You know GK. But did I get all that right? You I mean, got it right, okay. man. Right. Yeah, you got it yeah. right. But mine, minus all the theatrics I did in the middle of it, that was probably distracting. You had, you had the shameless plugs, which, yeah. you know, I got to respect. <laughs> I never came out and said it. I just looked at the camera <laughs> like that. Yeah, people know uh, your eyes at this point. <laughs> I haven't even looked at the camera yet. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's okay. So I'll, I'll give you some opportunities to, uh, to, look, to look at the camera. Um, so what's kind of the goal going forward with Tulsa Remote? Just keep on doing what you guys w wanting to do? Or is it your goal to expand? I mean, what is... Yeah, we got some cool so stuff cooking up. Uh, we, there's So one of the big, you know, uh, over a billion dollar industry across the world is digital nomads, uh, which are folks that... What are is just, digital yeah. nomads? So basically people that can just kind of pick up their life and go. Um, oh, so they're like always just kind of on the move. Gypsies. They are uh, remote workers that are just kind of never in a consistent place. So okay. just kind of moving around, seeing the world. And there's a lot of programs that have popped up like that. And they, they might be less interested in committing an entire year to Tulsa, but um, they might pay to actually live in a furnished apartment for a month see what Tulsa has to offer and get access oh. to the co-working space, have some of those, the access to the events that we do. And so we've got something coming up in October. It's called Tulsa bound. Uh, you can Google that and look it up online, which is really cool. Um, so, uh, one month it's 2,700 bucks, fully furnished apartment, uh, again, access to all that community stuff that we do, which would be really cool. And then another aspect we're thinking about is like, how could we bake into the Tulsa remote experience? Um, professional development that helps people become better remote workers. Cause I think we all kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, in many industries, we're just kind of shoved into this remote work environment. Um, and haven't gotten a ton of guidance as to like how to do this well, how to manage, um, you know, dispersed teams well. And so we're kind of thinking through like, what might it look like to have a path at Tulsa remote where you can get certified or, uh, learn from some of the best across the country on remote work skills and how might that translate to employer relationships? So we're thinking a lot about that. Um, but yeah, just continuing to, you know, build up to the ways in which we're supporting alumni that are sticking around and in, in tapping into those entrepreneurial dreams. Uh, you know, for us, it's finding the right balance of, you know, helping folks get to town, but then really showcasing all that they have within them and, and maximizing their potential in meaningful ways. Man, th that Tulsa bound sounds super interesting. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. So how many people can you guys accept on that? Well, we're starting with 12. We're just kind of seeing how it goes. So this first pilot that kicks off in October is really just a test to see like what demand is out there. There's 12 seats. There's still a couple seats left. So if you are interested or know folks that are, you know, digital nomads themselves and want to be a part of that, we'd love to have them apply online. Are you guys going to do more of those or are you just testing out with this? Yeah, first we're one? testing it. Okay, see how it goes. Testing. Yeah. I was going to say, I'll make a video on it. Dude, I'm putting love it. Yeah, we love yeah. it. All right, cool. And then you were um, saying you were talking about you know helping people with professional you know growing their their you know uh, remote work you know profession. Do, do you guys team up with a um, with a not really a college eh, maybe a college but they help people become like 
uh, computer design engineers. Oh, Atlas School. Atlas. Yeah, formerly known as Holburton. Holburton. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, it's not called that anymore. Right. I was trying to think of the new name, Atlas. That's really cool. Do you guys have any partnership with them? I know they do stuff with 36 Degrees North, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all underneath the same umbrella at the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Our oh. office is located right next to theirs. I know Libby very well, who's their CEO. Um, so yeah, all of our work is done in tandem as part of kind of an economic development strategy for the city, they are more focused on workforce development. So, you know, how do we build up the skills for those that are here in Tulsa locally, yeah. where the work that I'm doing both with Tulsa Remote, Tulsa Service Year, Campus Tulsa in Tulsa, that's all kind of focused on talent attraction and retention. Right. So how do we get people here, keep them around while also seeing the importance of building up the workforce that's here on the ground. Got you. Yeah. So d do you ever see any like Tulsa Remoters go over to uh, the Atlas and do yeah. classes over there? Yeah, we have. Yeah. I always think that I thought that was so cool how they offer that and you know, how they're willing to help with people with like financial, you know, circumstances. And then also the way they design their programming is uh, great. Yeah, it's a great gift to Tulsa. You think Libby sure. will come on here? I'm sure she would. All right. She's Thank about you. to have a baby. So is she hit her up in a few months? Okay. All right. I will. Yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was really, really cool. Um, well, what they do over there. So where, why do you like Tulsa so much? I know we kind of talked about the, you know, all the things that Tulsa have to offer, but why do you, why do you stay? Well, I mean, to me it's, uh, you know, there's everything you want in a city you have here. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you've got amazing food, music and arts is something that means a lot to me. The outdoor amenities, um, professional sports, mm -hmm. uh, zoo, aquarium, um, you're also a reasonable distance a drive to some really big cities for weekend getaways, but you get this life in a way that also doesn't require you to drive a ton every single day and at a really affordable cost. And so, you know, I think it's really the best of both worlds where you're able to get everything you want and need, and you're not having to pay an arm and a leg for it. Uh, I also just love, um, you know, the, the beauty and diversity of the history and um, the, the ways in which, uh, you know, I think Tulsa is really a fairly purple city that yeah. has a, a, fr a pretty wide range of political beliefs and um, can respectfully disagree and do that in a way that kind of brings people together. And uh, I don't know, I think the, the welcoming people, uh, the super nice mm -hmm. kind of Southern charm, while also having that high quality of life and not having to pay a ton for it. I, I think it checks a lot of those boxes. Yeah, that's that, when you said the Southern hospitality, it was so funny. I helped, I, I moved a lot of people from out of state and one of the biggest state, bigger states is California. And I had a client call me up and said, Steven, I've never, like, I honestly thought these people want something from me because they're so nice right? to me. Yeah. And then also I had someone like open the door for me and then also start talking to me. I thought they were trying to like capture me or something. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I had to stand a little bit closer to my husband. And then I realized like, oh, he was just being nice. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, welcome to Tulsa. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. Welcome to Tulsa. Yes, we hear that um, a lot too. What's, what's probably, I have two more questions for you. What is probably the biggest state you guys draw from? Or do you guys have those analytics? Oh yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. got a lot of data, Texas, California. Um, I think a third of our folks overall come from those two states. Oh, Texas, which I mean, they're the biggest state, so yeah, it's not terribly surprising, but yeah, that Texas and California are the Texas biggest drawers. Yep. And then like, and I know you guys give out a lot of, um, you know, people that, you know, go through the interview process and you say, Hey, you got one year to come, come over mm -hmm. here. How about, do you know the percentage of people that you guys give that invitation to that actually come to not come? I mean, yeah. 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 So it's about 40% of anyone we invite comes. Okay. If they come and visit, which is another aspect of the program Ooh. I didn't mention earlier. Yeah, so yeah, if, you, if you do get in to the program, um, you also are allowed to come and visit on our dime. So we'll give you $500 in reimbursement for yep. travel costs to come and see. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we have about a 48 hour, uh, 48 hours of programming each month that you can join us on a hosted visit, or you can just come on your own time if you prefer, but, um, we'll give you $500 either way. And, uh, typically if people come and visit, there's like an 80% chance that they're going to move. So oh. when they see it and experience it and give it a chance, um, you know, that likelihood of moving goes way up. So you gotta get them on that visit. Yeah. That's a big, get them on the that's visit. a big conversion rate hmm. that we look for is how many folks can we get here for that visit? Yeah. yeah. And then another question I had for you is cause I get this question uh, sometimes from people that are interested in Tulsa remote is 
you know, they have a family. They're like, oh, I mean, I bet you it's just a bunch of young kids moving, yeah. moving there for this program. And I've actually helped a couple of families like, yeah. with kids and, you know, and older older adults. So what do you know what what percentage and can you kind of talk on that about sure. being family and bachelor? Yeah, I think younger? the yeah, I think the that's another misconception is that it's kind of the single person that's, you know, has the ability to pick up their life. And I think it's easy to visualize that person. But the average age is 35. Um, average oh. salary is $100,000. You know, these are typically people that are kind of well into their career. Um, and yeah, we a good chunk of folks do have families and are, you know, looking for a backyard or a mm -hmm. third car garage or a playroom for their kids. And Tulsa offers up that opportunity. So lots of families, um, you know, there, there are a good number of singles too, sure. But like I said earlier, out of 3,200 people, you've got 3,200 stories. There's really not a generalization that we can paint across the board. Yeah. Have you had anybody that were two single people that moved here that met and got married? I know that we've had some folks get married. I don't know if they really? met here. Yeah. Tulsa, Tulsa remote is also matchmaking. That is actually <laughs> something we tried to avoid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you said you said you wanted to, uh, you know, bring up the population in Tulsa, but you didn't, you know, necessarily mention how. It's not one of the strategies. Oh, it's yeah. not. Okay, okay. I was just, I was just wondering. Yeah, worth, worth a shot. Worth a shot. You know, one of the uh, other things we hear, we I know we're kind of running out of time, but just wanted to touch on is, yeah. if the ten thousand dollars is like is paying dividends, you know, and, and last we, every year we do an economic impact report. Yeah. We, we know based on the last year's numbers that the $10,000 we spent has been returned to the city 13 to one. Um, there's been about $500 million in direct labor income that was added to the city through the people that we brought in. Um, there's $6 million in taxes that have gone to the state and city. And one of the coolest things I think, especially for a local audience is, you know, when you bring in a bunch of people, um, instead of focusing on some of the bad that might come with that kind of mass migration, it also opens up so many opportunities at a local labor level. So yeah. you have more people that are spending money at bars or restaurants or coffee shops, more people that are getting hotel rooms or going to the ticket, you know, to the, the music uh, venues for tickets. And what we know through our economic impact data is that there's been 1300 local jobs created because of the demand for labor that our folks have brought in. So wow. because of their spending power, that creates labor demand. 1300 local jobs because of the folks that we've brought. So there's 3,200 people we've brought in that have created 1300 jobs for locals, which I think kind of butts up against some of the local narrative of really, this is just a program for people that aren't here. What about me? What about me, the Tolson? Right. And I think in addition to all the ways that the George Kaiser Family Foundation supports locals, we know firsthand that this program is also supporting locals through the economic impact and community impact, but also in very tangible ways, opening up jobs for local Tolsons, which I, which I think is a beautiful thing. Oh, it's crazy. Cause I mean, yeah, you gotta really think about it. Like you're not just moving anybody here to Tulsa. There's an application process that we already touched on, right. but I mean, most of these people have, you know, very well paying jobs. Yeah. That, you know, guess what? They're paying taxes and, yep. you know, they're staying and, you know, they're being part of the community and yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like $10,000 win. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yep. I, I mean, if I had it, I would I'd pay that, <laughs> pay, pay that all day long, all day long. So where the, where are some ways people can find, uh, you or, I mean, Tulsa remote and find that process. Yeah. And I mean, I'm online. LinkedIn is a great place. I guess this is a time I could look at the camera. Feel free to add <laughs> me on LinkedIn. Uh, Tulsa remote.com is a great place, uh, for, you know, uh, learning more about the program and our eligibility requirements. Like I mentioned, social media is an awesome spot to, to just to check out not only what's going on within the program, but I think we do a great job of just highlighting everything that Tulsa has to offer because really that's our product, you know, in, in so many ways is, is the city. Um, so yeah, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Always love to connect with folks there. Um, and then info at TulsaRemote.com if you have any questions. And we actually just launched a podcast yesterday. So what? Uh, it's called Remote Revelations. And it's me talking with folks about uh, their stories and huh. why they moved to Tulsa. And so if you're interested, I think there's four episodes that were launched initially and we'll continue to add to those. Just All being right. able to showcase those stories that you were asking about in real tangible ways well, here and straight from the people themselves. I'm going to go watch that and then maybe headhunt a couple of those guys and have them on my podcast <laughs> and be like, that's an interesting story. I'll have you come to my podcast. Perfect. We love it. Yeah. And then one last question. Yeah. Um, what, what would you give tips to someone that is applying for Tulsa remote, um, in that process? Just, just do it. 
Yeah, I mean, you any, know, any inside information, Justin? That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, do, what is there a right question they need to answer? Well, you know, so, we want people to be honest. You know, be, so honesty, be yourself. That's it. That's it. Be yourself. Uh, <clears throat> we recognize, you know, that Tulsa is not for everybody. Yeah. You know, and so I think the more that you can show up in a genuine way, and then allow us to showcase what Tulsa has to offer, I think collectively we'll kind of figure out whether it's a good fit. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's our job to sell the cities in ways, sell the city in ways that it's not. Um, but through that application process, we're, we're not, you know, bashful about what we're looking for. Yeah. I mean, we're looking for folks that are going to contribute to the economy that are going to find meaningful ways to contribute to the community, really not looking for folks that are just coming for one year and taking the money and, and running, sitting on their couch, traveling the world, you know, while having a lease in Tulsa. I mean, we want yeah. folks that are going to be active participants and recognize that they're signing up for something that's bigger than them and it's bigger than a program. I mean, oftentimes the story of our program is the money that we're giving away and the, the participant that is taking that money. But really what we're looking for is the inverse of that. We're looking for folks that are ready to give to the place that they're relocating to and not just take the money that gets them there. Right. Well, Justin, man, thank you so much for coming on. And remember, if you want to learn more about Tulsa Remote, go to www.tulsaremote.com. You nailed it. You're so good at this. Gosh, man, I'm so good. (laughs) Justin, thanks for coming on, man. Good to see you. See you.